What is up, grade 12? Welcome to Sir Sabinus Class. But before we begin, I would like you to be reminded of the following things. Number one, always jot down notes. Always keep your notebook with you and only write the things that are considered important within the discussion. Number two, you can pause whenever you want to. Number three, do not only watch the lesson and play the video, but instead, learn from it. So for our next topic, under the Unit 2, which is World of Dance, we will be talking about dance as an art. Okay, so dance is an art. We all know that dance comes in different forms. Not all dances are the same. It came from different origin. It uses a variation of steps, music, and all dance styles are not alike. And meron silang distinction from one another. So in this unit, we will be exploring the nature of different traditional dances. This part of dances deal with different art form while the other parts can be talking about how to utilize it and we will also learn and experience some of these dances by studying and performing different fundamental steps and we will learn how to create simple dance routine from fundamental dance steps of each dance genre let's start this discussion with a quotation from Martha Graham which is an American choreographer according to her nobody cares if you can dance well just get up and dance great dancers are not great because of their technique they are great because of their passion with emphasis the word na passion there are instances when students when i ask students to perform a certain dance they are always cautious and nahihiya sila kasi lagi nilang excuse akin sir hindi po ako marunong magsayaw sir i don't know how to dance well personally if I am asking you to do a certain performance task, most especially if it includes dancing, I don't care if you can't dance well. And most of my students know that. I just want you to get up and dance because I personally believe that when you stand up, you tried performing, you gave your all, you did your best, that is already considered as one of the determinate determinants na ay willing sumayaw tong batang to and there are students na kahit hindi marunong magaling sumayaw but when they are showing passion with their performance i consider them a great dancer kasi i personally believe that when a dancer knows how to dance but doesn't have the passion hindi siya magaling sumayaw Another quote from James K. Fableman, Dance is an art which deals with the motions of the human body. As going back with our first discussion, diba, we have this innate yearning to move. And one of the uh, parang signs na ang isang tao ay buhay ay kapag gumagalaw siya. So, dance simply cannot be done without moving. Hindi ka naman makakasayo ng hindi ka gagalaw. So, according to Fableman, it, uh, it's about the motions of the human body. Dance is an art where it shows the body movements with rhythm in ordered sequence, which uses different visual patterns of line, solid shape, and of course, colors, according to Thomas Munro. There are lots of examples of uh, dance as an art, and under it, we have folk dances, we have ballet dance, of course, and contemporary dance. But we will be focusing on folk dance for this discussion. So, folk dance, it define natin. In our objective, we will be defining folk dance, what are the different examples and types of dance, what are common places na nag-present siya, ano yung mga costumes na ginagamit with folk dance, and how is it as compared with other kind of dances. Therefore, let us talk about Philippine folk dance. Ano nga ba yung Philippine folk dance? Lagi na lang kasi yung pinapasayaw sa mga subject, lalo na sa MAPE, sa PE, lagi na lang po kaming pinagpo folk dance. But do you know the story or the history of Philippine folk dance? So in this lesson, we will be 
discussing what Philippine folk dance is and ano yung origin niya. So, Philippine folk dance or folk dance actually is known to be the oldest form of dance and known to be the earliest form of communication. There are dances which portrays a particular concept na yung mismong concept na yun lang yung ipinoportray nila. So, on this lesson, magbibigay ako na examples kung para saan nga ba yung mga, baka may familiar kasi kayo on other folk dances, pero hindi nyo alam kung para siya saan. So, ang folk dance, earliest form siya ng communication because we know that dance itself is a form of communication. So, folk dance actually is a traditional dance wherein nasa isang country siya nag-exist tas nag-evolve na lang siya in a natural and spontaneous way. How? It's because folk dances commonly like folk songs, it portrays different everyday activities. So, alam naman natin yung mga folk songs like yung mga magtani may bibiro, mga paro-parong bukid, lahat yun, it portrays a certain concept the same with folk dancing i'll give you an example on the picture that you are seeing you can see there a girl and a boy girl is holding a fan abaniko in tagalog term so etong sayaw na to it shows us the Cariñosa dance. Cariñosa is known to be one of the most famous dance in the Philippines. And, uh, ayan yung isa sa mga sayaw na common at alam ng mga tao sa Pilipinas. So, it portrays a certain subject which is about courting. So, as what the definition said, yung folk dance kasi, it shows us spontaneous and natural everyday activities. Kumbaga, sa mga story, sa mga uh, kwentong bayan, ito ay nasaling dila na. In terms of folk dance, ganun din yung nangyari sa kanya. It is considered as handed down from generation to generation. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na para siyang uh, saling dila sa mga kwentong bayan. Sa sayaw naman, it's handed down from generation to generation. And it uses fixed and less movements, pero with different patterns. Tapos gumagamit siya ng different kinds of variations. Gumagamit siya ng simple movements, simple na tugtog lang. Kaya ang folk dance ang isa sa mga pinakamadaling sayawin. That's why I don't understand why students hate dancing folk dance, where in fact, napakadali niya lang naman i-perform. And it can differ different in different uh, areas or provinces. So, hindi lahat ng province may pare-parehong dance na folk dance. May iba't iba po tayong folk dance on certain localities. So, mamaya, I'll be giving you an example of different folk dances from different places and localities. According to Lopez 2006, and I quote, Folk dance is a traditional mode of expression which employs bodily movements of redundant Patterns. Sabi ko nga kanina, folk dancing itself is full of redundant patterns. Paulit-ulit, repetitive, simple, and it is linked to definitive features of rhythmic beats or music. Ang common actually sa mga folk dances, the beat is very simple, the music is very simple, kaya napakasadali niya lang sayawin. In terms of dance energies, Yung movements that are used in Philippine folk dance, it uses a sustained movement. Naalala nyo ba yung six different dance energies? As compared with contemporary dance, ang um, Philippine folk dance, the same with ballet, both of it uses sustained dance movements. Ibig sabihin, flowing lang, very smooth, it follows a certain beat, na yung tempo niya is sakto lang. Kaya commonly sa mga elementary, ito yung sinasayaw. It's because it's very simple, it's redundant, yung patterns niya paulit-ulit lang. Pero napakasaya niyang sayawin. Some of the characteristics of Philippine folk dance are as follows. Number one, it is traditional. It is given. Traditional talaga siya. Number two, it's expressive in behavior. Kasi nga, it can be used in... Uh, expressing different emotions, different situations, and different activities that are done on our everyday lives. Kaya siya expressive in terms of behavior. Number three, it is very simple. It uses basic rhythm which dominates the whole and the entirety of the dance. So, may ina-establish na certain pattern of movement. Kaya napakadaling magsayo ng folk dance kasi yung figure one niya, 
may iba lang ng konti si figure 2. Pagdating man ng figure 3, either i-combine niya si figure 1 and 2 or magagawa lang ulit siya ng babalik lang sa figure 1. So, it's very repetitive. Meron siyang ini-establish na isang pattern ng movement. Kaya, it's easy to remember, it's easy to understand, and it's easy to be memorized. Next! It was created by an unknown choreographer for the purpose of communal efforts. So, sa sobrang dami ng contributors nito as considered, hindi nakilala kung sino talaga yung gumawa. And it's con it's considered as a communal effort. And number five and last characteristic of folk dance, it performs different functions of like kapareho ng what folk people are usually doing. Sabi nga kanina sa inyo, parang folk song lang yan. Folk song and folk dance. It portrays certain events, certain things that our people are doing on their everyday lives. So, yun yung limang characteristic ng folk dance. One of the well-known and considered as the mother of Philippine folk dance is Miss Francisca Reyes Aquino. So, si Francisca Reyes Aquino is one of the national artists for dance. She was one of the first, very first, national artist for dance and he is no, she is known to be an pioneer a pioneer of philippine folk dancing in the philippines so she was yun nga, the first national artist for dance and mother siya ng philippine folk dance i remember when we were ako no first time ko pala magturo ng folk dance francisca reyes aquino is one of the names that i continuously encounter so no curious ako sinerge ko yung background ng buhay niya yung story ng kanyang uh, achievements. Francisco Reyes Aquino actually is one of the most popular book creator of Philippine folk dance. Napakahirap hagilapin ng libro ni Francisco Reyes Aquino of different folk dance and I am really looking forward for that book. Tapos kada may Manila Book Fair, tinatry namin laging hanapin. Lagi ko nire-request to find dances from, dance book dances from Francisco Reyes Aquino. Pero sadly, lagi siyang no, wala, either wala ubus na or may nakauna na. The first purpose of her books, as you can see, those are examples of her books. It was a research which was entitled Philippine Folk Dances and Games. It's actually specifically used by teachers and playground instructors. Dati, itong bulakin niya na to, she started folk dancing and created folk dance by means of a thesis on 1920. So yung thesis na yon, ang title niya is for the purpose of folk dances and games. Sabi nga kanina, para lang siya sa teachers originally. Pero syempre, ikaw ba naman mabigyan ng chance to uh, promote the culture of a certain locality or your own locality by means of dancing? Syempre, you will grab it. That's why Philippine folk dance is somehow na popular siya not just in the Philippines but also on other places. Dahil doon, in 1954, nabigyan lang naman po siya ng Republic Award of Merit na binigay ni late President Ramon Magsaysay and the title of the award is Outstanding Contribution Towards the Advancement of Filipino Culture. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, if ikaw, as a person, you give something like that, something big like that, you deserve to be praised, to be honored, to be uh, awarded. Kasi, imagine kung wala si Francisca Reyes Aquino and her colleagues and the contributors of Philippine Folk Dance, wala tayong mga sayaw na nagpo-promote ng culture culture ngayon. Aminin man natin sa hindi, we have to admit that folk dances, even it's in its simplest form of its simplicity, folk dance is one of the greatest way to promote our culture. Kaya wag na wag niyong babaliwalain ng Philippine folk dance. Ngayon, there are instances that people are mixing the term folk dance, national dance, and ethnic dance. Ngayon, we will be differentiating those three. Ano nga ba yung difference ni folk dance kay national and kay ethnic dance? Starting off with folk dance. Folk dance kasi in definition, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, it's a traditional dance which exists in a certain country. For instance, the dances that we have, the Philippine folk dances that we have are kind of dances that are existing in our country in the Philippines. 
kailan siya nagiging national dance. Kapareho siya actually ng folk dance. It is a traditional dance as well. Kaya lang, the difference is, take note of this, meron siyang national scope. Ibig sabihin, it crosses the boundary of a certain country. It is widely danced on other countries. For instance, Carinosa, Coracha, Pandango sa Ilaw, yung tatlong sayaw na yon are actually folk dance in the Philippines, originated in the Philippines. Kaya lang, in terms of the popularity, so umabot siya on other places, most especially on other countries as well. So those dances are example of national folk dances as they are popular not just in the country but also on other countries. Si ethnic naman is almost the same then with other dances like folk and national dance. Si ethnic dances kasi, it is a kind of dance wherein it shows ethnological dances na pinaperform siya sa mga primitive tribes. Commonly, it is a kind of dance which retains a spiritual kin kinship with our mga ritual, mga community custom. So, itong mga ethnic dances, it requires actually a special performing skills according to Cross 1962. Kasi nga, hindi naman lahat ng tao is fond of dancing. Folk dances, lalo na pag ethnic dance. Di ba ethnic dance is commonly yung mga pinag, pinupulaan baga ng mga tao? Kasi parang ano ba yung mga movements na yan? Parang kakaiba naman. Parang hindi common yung mga movements. So, meron siyang iba't ibang um, categories. So, mamaya pag-uusapan natin yun. So, again, folk dance is a kind of dance that is existing in a country national when it crosses the boundaries while ethnic dances, ito naman yung mga primitive tribes or primitive cultures yung sumasaya. So, under ethnic dance, you have three different types. The first one is ritual dances. So, in definition, it's a dance that depicts, of course, different ceremonies. So, here are two examples. We have here the Dugso from Bukidnon and Pagdiwata from Palawan. So, those two examples are kind of dances which depicts ceremonies. Next, we have life cycle dances which shows different uh, kind of uh, cycles or the different cycles of humans such as birthing, courtship, wedding, and funeral. Here are two examples. We have uh, Binasuan from Pangasinan and Daling Daling which is a Muslim courtship dance. So, yung life cycle from the word itself, life cycle or yung cycle of life, birthing, pangangana, courtship, paniliga, wedding, kasal, funeral, pagkamatay. So, that's uh, basically life cycle dances. While occupational dances is a kind of dance which exhibits work and occupation. Best example, we have Maglalatik from Binyan. Alam nyo ba that this is one of the most famous dance in Laguna? So, it originated from town of Binyan sa Laguna province, which is pinaperform siya as a homage to the town saint, which is San Isidro de Labrador. It is a dance or a native dance which shows different coconut halves na naka-attach sa mga torso ng dancer, sa shoulder, tas sa kamay, tas pinatutu tunog na pinatutunog yan. So, yung mananagat naman came from Cebu. So, this is a occupational dance which shows the story or tells the story of a fisherman's life. Tapos, yung mga dancers naman, pinapakita nila yung uh, waltz steps, kung paano nag ng water yung mga kababaihan, paano nangingisda yung mga kalalaki. While mag-asik is from Cotabato. So, those are the three types or categories of ethnic dance. Again, we have ritual dance, life cycle dance, and occupational dance. So, now let us go with the major classification of folk dance. We have Cordillera dances, Spanish influence dances, Muslim dances, tribal dances, and of course, rural dances. So, we all know that Philippines is very rich in terms of folk dance at maraming folk dance sa Pilipinas, maraming collections sa Pilipinas that came from different parts of the country. So, ngayon, pag-uusapan natin yung different classifications and origins of those folk dances. Starting off with the first one. So, Cordillera dances is a kind of dance which depicts 
their celebration of their daily lives. And this is commonly done on Bontok, Ifugao, Benguet, Apayao, and Kalinga tribes. So, these people actually existed way before the Spaniards or the foreigners stepped foot on the Philippines. So, what kind of dances do they usually show? It shows good harvest, health, peace, Philippine war, of course, other symbols of living. So, that is on their Cordillera dances. Here are examples and what costumes do they use. So, Cordillera dances, example, we have Bontok from Bontok Patong and we have Banga from Kalinga. What costumes do they usually use? For male, they use G-string, short jacket, and shoulder bond, feathered headdresses, or commonly, syempre, the term bahag. Sa females naman, they are using hablon, or ito yung isang hinabi na tela, and different accessories like Bids. So that is the first one. Again, Cordillera dances, Bontok Ifugao, Apayao, and many others. Example, Bontok, Patong, Kalinga, Banga. Those are the costumes that they are using. Second one. We have the Spanish influence dance. Ito sobrang famous and common ito sa atin at aware tayo ditong lahat. Spanish influence dances are different dances created by Filipino adaptations of European dances. These are dances that is commonly uh, accompanied by rondalia. Rondalia is an instrument na pakamukha ng ukulele, guitar, but mas marami siyang string. Tapos, yung tunog niya is very soothing and suitable for folk dances. So, rondalia instrument yung ginagamit. And uh, Spanish influence dances is reflecting commonly Christianity and of course, art and culture ng Europe since doon nga nagmula yung Spanish influence dances. Here are the costumes and examples of this dance. So, we have here Jota and Habanera. So, yung Jota or Jota, Ang costume na kinagamit nila commonly sa Spanish influence dances, like what we dance, ang example na baka familiar kayo, Cariñosa. So, for female, uh, they use is Maria Clara. For male, is Barong Tagalog and Black Pants. So, ayan yung Spanish influence dance. So, they are dancing different kind of dances like Jotas, Fandangos, Mazuras, and of course, Mazurkas, and of course, Waltz. The third one is Muslim dances. Muslim dances is unique because uh, they use uh, different movements, most especially in their hand. They use this intricate hand and, move, uh, hand and arm movement. Ang influence niya came from Malay, Javanese, and Middle Eastern traders from Islam. Common themes that they use are mysticism, royalty, and of course, beauty. If you know Sinkil, Sinkil is the picture that is being shown there. Sinkil is a royalty dance which involves like parang 10 people lang but the main concern or the main concept of the dance is tatlo lang yan. We have the princess, Yan, yung nakita nyo sa unahan, yung may hawak na pamaypay. Tapos, meron siyang alila, yung nasa likod, yung namamayong. And he, meron siyang, ay, meron siyang lalaki na sumasayo dyan. Meron siyang parang warrior. So, those three are the main characters in Singkil. They use fingers to express feelings and emotion. And, syempre, ang mga costume nila yung mga shining, shimmering costumes. Mga pagka nagpapa-perform ng mga sayo ng Muslim dances ay gumagamit ng metallic foil, gumagamit ng mga uh, dark na colors ng kahit ano for effects. So, that is commonly Muslim dances. Here are examples from Maranao. We have Singkil. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. So, as you can see, yun yung babae. It's like tinikling, but the difference is yung bamboo that they are using is nakakross lang kasi yan. And of course, we also have from Tausog, which is Pangalay. Pangalay, literally, kaya Pangalay yung title niya. Pag sinayo mo siya, sort of, mangangalay ka kasi. It only uses hand kapag ka nagsasayaw. So, the costume that they use are commonly sigpit or sablay, where sa lalaki naman katal uh, commonly is mad uh, patadjong or the malong pants. So, that is Muslim dances. Next, we have tribal dances. Tribal dances are intricate in terms of their craftsmanship and different uh, uh, resources like metal, clothing, and jewelry. They use dancing to reflect their um, 
parang belief from spirits and shamans sa rituals ng a- and animals and of course sa kanilang mga anito or yung mga god nila. It is known also as the ethnic dance and these ethnic dances are found on different minorities on the parts of the Philippines and sometimes they imitate animal sounds, human singing and of course indigenous materials. So sila yung mga sayaw na commonly may mga dalang sibat, yung may mga parang mga nakasabit na headdress na may mga palong or mga feather of chicken so sila po yun. Examples are Madal Tahao from Tibuli and Manobo, Bangkakao. So the costume that they are using are almost like the same nung Cordillera dances. So gumagamit sila ng mga traditional costumes for their performances. Rural dances are performed mostly for fiestas, kanilang honor for their patron saints. So, they give homage to the barrios and commonly para siya sa good harvest, sa health. It shows you gaiety and laughter or festivities, yung happiness ng mga fiestas. It, reflect, it reflects how simple the life of the people in the barrio are, yung perseverance na meron sila. And the, their materials are commonly clapping, rondali instruments, percussion, and in, different instruments na minsan makeshift lang or ginagawa lang nila. And uh, it depicts common work like uh, daily activities of the peasants or yung mga common na tao lang, yung mga mahihirap na tao. So, yung mga taga-rural, it shows, again, happiness and gaiety. Example, maglalitik again and saot sararug. So, the costume that they are using for female are balintawak with soft panuelo and tapis. Sa male naman is camisa de chino and trousers of different colors. So, kung naalala nyo yan, yung mga laging sinusuot kapag magpe-perform ng mga folk dances, laging nakakamisa de chino ang boys, girls are using balintawak. So, those are the major classification of dances. So again, review what are the five major classification of dances. We have Cordillera, we have Spanish influence, we have uh, tribal, we also have ethnic dances and different dances from different places. Now let us talk about the categories of Philippine folk dance. Ano naman yung mga categories ng Philippine folk dance? First, we have life cycle dances. So, nasabi ko na to kanina. It is used for different kind of stages in life of a person like courtship, wedding, and funeral. We have number two, festival dances. It is used for recurring events or events that are celebrated repeatedly on a certain place. So, ito yung meron siyang yung mga events niya ay may considered as may special na significance. Number three, occupational dance or kind of dances wherein it shows livelihood, it depicts work of the Filipino people. So, may isa tayong example, national dance siya in rice growing regions. So, yung occupational dance na yun is about planting to harvesting to threshing, failing, flailing, pounding, earing, and winnowing yung um, palay. So, it is by Aquino, Francis Reyes Aquino. Four, we have ritual and ceremonial dance. So, these are kind of dances from its name itself. It's uh, performed on rituals and ceremonies ng isang group or ng tribe or group of people. So, those are some of the categories. Next, we have five. We have, of course, game dances. It's a derivation of local folk games. One example of these dances is yung pokol. Yung pokol dance from Aklan and Kapi sa Panay region. Ang ibig sabihin ng pokol sa mga hindi nakakaalam, yung to strike or bump each other. So, it is also created by Aquino, 1979. Six, joke and trickster dance is a kind of dance which includes jokes or tricks na ginagawa ng isang dancer either to the group of dancers or 
pwedeng sa ibang tao din. So, the intention is to render yung individual na yun to a physical or mental indignity or discomfort. So, that is according to Lopez 2006. Example ng sayaw, we have pandango sa Sambalilo, which is a dance from Tagalog wherein yung girl, it teases her male partner by playing with his hat. Tapos kapag malapit na siyang makarating dun sa babae, push back niya yung Uh, lalaki, tas itatapon niya yung hat on the floor. So, as you can see, the process, it's a joke and a trickster dance. So, that is number six. Number seven, we have mimetic or drama dances. It mimics the animals or it shows inanimate objects or other people. So, yung mga drama, dramatic dancers nito, eh, they get into roles like they are becoming someone else or they are immersing themselves on a certain subject. For example, yung itik-itik dance from Surigao. Yung sayaw na itik-itik, parang they are imitating a dance. Salimbawa naman, other examples are kalapati. So, they are imitating naman dove. So, that is a mimetic or mimetic, mimetic or drama dances. So, meron siyang ini-imitate, may ginagaya. Eight, we have war dances. It's a kind of dance which show feud and enmity of different dances, most especially yung mga two, example niya ay two female dance, two male dancers which engage in physical combat na parang Spartan-like na intensity. One example is maglalatik. It is a war dance with shows and depict a battle between Muslims of the Southern Philippines and the Christians Filipinos of the Lowlands over sa latik. Kung alam niyo yung latik, it's a residue after coconut boils down. Yun yung ginagamit sa sinukmani. Eh. So, this dance, it showed how the Muslim won against the Christians and they sought conciliation in order to convert the Muslim morals to Christianity. So, imagine yung maglalatik is a simple dance pero the history is very good. Imagine it's a war between, it's a war dance between Christians and Muslims. So, that is, again, war dance. So, Spartan-like intensity. And last example, we have number nine, is the social amenities dance. So, yung social amenities dance is a kind of dance which shows and express social graces, hospitality, and offerings of gifts to their friends. So, yung Social dances na yon are like ballroom dances. Ito yung mga commonly na mga Filipinized Western dances which shows camaraderie and merriment which belongs, belongs to a certain group. So, some examples of it are Alay, Habanera, Batolinena, Minuete, Yano. Kung napapansin nyo yung mga social amenities dances, iba-iba yung mga commonly na ginagamit na words kasi nga, influence siya by other places as well. So, those are the kind of dances or classification of folk dances. So, we have nine in total. Again, we have life cycle dance, festival, occupational, ritual, and ceremonial, game dances, joke and trickster dance, mimetic or drama dance, war dances, and of course, social amenities dance. Next. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Ronnie Francis, and we have another video for our Folkness Library episode. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the yes, the bell button beside it to see more updates on this channel. In today's video, I'm going to introduce to you the fundamental positions of arms and feet in folk dance. So yeah, without any further talk, let's get into it. First is the fundamental positions of arms. So let's start with the first position. So please both arms in front of you, chest level. Arms are slightly bent forward, just like that. Second position, open arm sideward, shoulder level and arms are slightly bent. Third position, bring left arm overhead, passing in first position, chest level, and arms are slightly bent. Fourth position, bring the right arm in front of you, first position, arms slightly bent. Fifth position, bring the right arm overhead, arm are slightly bent. And that is the fundamental positions for the arms. Now let's move on to the fundamental positions for the feet. First position, bring heels touching together, 
and toes are apart. So that's the first position. Second position, step your right foot sideward right. Third position, bring the heel to the instep of your right foot. And so that I can show it better to you guys. So that's the third position. Fourth position, bring your right foot pointing in front of your left foot. And fifth position, bring your right heel touching the toe of the left foot. For the arm fundamental positions, you can start with your right arm, uh, yes, leading, or the other way around. The same thing with our feet. So you can start with your right foot, you can start with which one you want to, to lead or to move first. It's okay. Both are okay. Now, let's combine the fundamental positions of the arms and feet. Okay, let's start. First position, second position, third position, fourth, fifth, and then back. Other arm and other foot. First position, second position, this time right arm high. fourth and fifth position so on the previous slide you saw the fundamental hand in fit position and how to do it so for your activity tomorrow para lang in advance aralin niyo na for your asynchronous activity so you will be taking picture of yourself doing the five fundamental hand in fit position in talk dance so yung um, gagamitin nyo na worksheet dito will be given by me sa ating asynchronous class. So, ngayon pa lang, if you have time, try watching the video again and learning how to do it. I'm sure alam nyo naman na to kasi grade 10 pa lang kayo ginagawa nyo na to. So, this is one of your feet na performance tasks. So, this video is about the basic and the fundamental folk dance steps na commonly ginagamit to sa mga iba't ibang sayaw. So, gumagamit lang sila ng repeated steps. Most of these folk dances are based on several fundamental dance steps. And according to Lopez of Philippine Folk Dance, ang steps dapat ng folk dance are considered simple, basic, yung rhythm niya, and it dominates the dance na nag -e establish siya ng certain pattern of movement. So, with this, it is imperative to review and learn the different fundamental dance steps in order to perform several folk dances. So, the origin of these steps varies and depends on the influence of dances in different cultures. And here are the following fundamental steps that are useful in learning how to perform folk dances. So, in this video, we have the folk dance steps that you should be learning and you will be using for your activity for your asynchronous class. So, ito po yung mga steps na yun.
And for for this activity, you will be recording yourself and uh, that's after you chose five steps on basic fundamental steps video that I played a while ago. So yung sampu na yon, pipili lang kayo ng lima doon and you will be performing that by yourself. So you will take a video of yourself doing the fundamental step and yung further instructions will be given by the teacher which is me sa ating asynchronous class. So for the meantime if you're done watching this, panoorin niyo lang yung video repeatedly tapos aralin niyo na siya as soon as possible para bukas gagawin niyo na lang siya. So that is all for our lesson and activities, upcoming activities. See you again in our next video, next meeting, next discussion, next lesson. Thank you!